It is the perk of the web API in that you have a lighter environment. You no longer have to build out the IB Gateway or Trader or Workstation on your platform. You're able to get the lightweight work of a REST API to do all of your requesting. You can either use the system interchangeably, so that way you can use partially TWS and partially the web API, but you can also kind of build out new technologies. You're listening to IBKR Podcasts. Find more conversations at ibkrpodcasts.com. Please remember any trading discussions are for information purposes only and are not intended to portray recommendations. Please listen to further disclosures at the end of today's episode. Now, welcome to our show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's IBKR podcast. And today we're going to talk about the Client Portal API and one of its facets, which is WebSockets. Anyway, joining me is Andrew Wise. He's the U.S. API Support Supervisor for Interactive Brokers. So, Andrew, thanks for joining. What is a WebSocket? Hi, Mary. Glad to be here. So, a WebSocket is a sort of asynchronous uh, data stream that allows data to flow into the user user's program after requesting it. It's a very strongly underutilized tool we find in the Web API because it gives clients the ability to get kind of a nonstop stream of, let's say, market data or portfolio information, trades data, all of those things that a lot of users tend to kind of request on a loop. It adds that automated update time for you. And that's kind of the general use, at least at interactive brokers, of what a WebSocket is. And once again, you would be using this within the browser itself. You'd be writing some sort of browser application that would be connecting via this WebSocket to get all this continuous data. Yeah, so it would be a lot like our other uh, use cases for the endpoints APIs where you can build it into a, either a browser application or if you just wanted to make a fully automated system that doesn't have a UI and a WebSocket would work just the same. And it is completely flexible for both use cases. Obviously, if you want to see the data in real time, it is an excellent tool. And I know I've even built it to connect into applications like Excel and it works flawlessly there. Love that. Who can use a WebSocket? Yeah, so the nice thing about the WebSocket is that it has all of the same sort of restrictions, if you want to call it that, of the standard Web API. So anyone that can use the Web API, as we discussed in our last uh, podcast together, can use the WebSockets just as well. No extra limitations or fees or anything like that. But you do have to have a funded account, right? Yes, it has to be a funded account at Interactive Brokers, and to reiterate from before, it is an IBKR Pro account only. doesn't work with light accounts. Got it. Okay, so how can you use this? So WebSocket technology is ever-evolving, and Interactive Brokers is really working harder than ever to bring it up to par. WebSockets are a structure that's kind of a, a unanimous system similar to the rest of similar to a rest api and so it can be used to uh, stream market data order information and account details like i mentioned before okay so we talked about the how when should i use it uh in instances where a value is constantly needed as soon as it's available for most users the essential values in this case are something like live market data or information about order status and execution um, so that way, the moment a trade does fill or gets partially executed, you're able to get that data as soon as it's uh, provided, which can be a great tool in your kind of day-to-day -day trading. What can be used to build a WebSocket? Are there any special technologies for it and so forth? So the beauty of the WebSocket, like I was saying, similar to a REST uh, standard, is that it is a standard. Uh, almost any program that can build out like these REST requests can almost always build out a WebSocket structure. Even curl has access to build the actual structure. However, not all systems are created equal in the sense that while curl can uh, build the WebSocket, it doesn't have the information necessary to, uh, to send topic requests within it. But we most often see things like uh, Python, JavaScript, and even actually Postman as a new evolving tool in the WebSocket world. So you can build everything in just the standard Postman script uh, without too much extra work, and it is completely functional in that way to fa facilitate your WebSockets. 
Uh, we actually, in our Python tutorial series, cover exactly how to use WebSockets through the use of Python and its WebSocket client library. That's great. Does, so does that mean uh, Interactive Brokers is going to start maybe using Postman, putting out some examples? Just a question about that. Oh, yeah, certainly. And not to get too in-depth on the details, but we actually do have a large restructuring of our existing campus documentation that will feature a lot of Swagger code and access for WebSocket kind of in a open API spec style. And so we should ex expect that in the near future. And as some uh, users may be aware, most open API spec you can import directly into Postman and the same should be going for uh, WebSockets as well. Why shouldn't I just use endpoints? The extra request system sounds like it could be complicated. So luckily, clients are welcome to use endpoints if that's something of preference. However, the nice thing about a WebSocket structure over an endpoint is that you're typically going to have to loop through the endpoint every couple of seconds uh, or even every second to try and get that data. Whereas with a WebSocket, it's going to provide that feedback instantaneously from interactive brokers side. We also see several scenarios where clients might be looping over this data very quickly. And because of that, you might also impede on your pacing limitation, which can further exacerbate your other requests. Why don't you talk about this pacing limitation for those who may not know what it is? Generally speaking, interactive brokers has a 10 requests per second pacing limitation. And what that means is in order to kind of maintain our infrastructure, we require that users send no more than 10 endpoint requests in any given second. Uh, this can include anything from requests for market data, requests for portfolio information, all the way to trying to place orders. We kind of cap it off at 10 requests per second, but because WebSockets are a different technology and a different structure, building these out won't actually impede your standard workflow. So you can get live market data and then still place 10 orders per second without kind of conflicting one another with those pacing limitations. Okay, so if I'm new to web environments as a whole, can this be compared to anything, this whole WebSocket technology? Certainly. So like I said at the top, it is an asynchronous technology. And for users not too familiar with web technologies, but have been trading using the TWS API, there's going to be a lot of similarities here. Uh, both the TWS API and WebSockets function through this asynchronous environment where outbound requests are all, not always met one-to-one -one with the response. Instead, you'll often open a large stream of data and retrieve every update as it's available rather than pinging the server and getting a single response back. If this is like the TWS API, specifically with Python, why wouldn't mm -hmm. I just use that? Uh, and you certainly could. The nice thing about WebSockets, and this goes back to even our prior discussion uh, from the other podcast, but it is the perk of the Web API in that you have a lighter environment. You no longer have to build out the IB Gateway or Trader Workstation on your platform. You're able to get the lightweight work of a REST API to do all of your requesting. You can either use the system interchangeably, so that way you could use partially TWS and partially the web API, but you can also kind of build out new technologies. Like I said before, I was actually importing the WebSocket into Excel using the Python Excel Wings library, and that way I can kind of replicate a similar structure as the Trader Workstation API, but now I can do it without having the intense resource demand on my machine. And also that gives me the opportunity with the Python library to kind of obfuscate around using Visual Basic so that way I can kind of dedicate my own work into Python, which I'm already familiar with, and into WebSockets, which is another familiar technology for me. So it can help kind of alleviate that extra level of difficulty you might see using these other programming languages. I love this, this discussion with Excel because my experience has been that a lot of people use uh, different platforms because they can integrate the market data into their portfolio with an Excel, get the real-time data. Mm -hmm. and, and they're so familiar with using macros and Excel that this is hugely beneficial. So my question is, uh, in order to use this component within the Excel library, do you have to pay extra for it or does it come with Excel? 
That's entirely free. And like I said, I actually have been using a, a library called Excel Wings. We actually have been working on a uh, article on the other side of the Ivy Care campus through the API article feed where we already have integrated Excel Wings with the TWS API, if you want to get a look at that. But in the near future, we're going to be putting out a new article referencing actually how to use WebSockets with that same Python library. But there's no cost, there's no extra fees, even the library itself is free. So it's one of those things we definitely encourage our users to explore. Is this on the Quant blog? This is on the Quant blog. Oh, I love that. Okay, so for people who don't know about this, if you're on the Interactive Brokers website, you go under education, you can see the campus, and the campus has a quant blog. The quant blog has articles, uh, code snippets, just from not only us, Interactive Brokers, but other parties as well, other contributors. So it really has a, a lot of information. Anything you want to add about the new documentation, Andrew? Uh, the only thing I can really say about it is it's one of those things that's ever evolving and improving. Like I said, we are doing our best to kind of bring it up to the in industry standard. And so there's going to be a lot of pretty major updates coming in the following month. So we encourage everybody to check it out. Uh, we have dedicated Excel pages there if that's something people are interested in. And of course, we have a full kind of documentation spread for the client portal API as a whole. So definitely check it out. All right, so we're going to keep this uh, short and sweet. Thank you, Andrew, for coming on to this podcast and talking to us about WebSockets. We're going to do this approximately once a, once a month, folks, uh, so we can get a little techy in our podcast. Uh, not only talk about market commentary, but also programmatically how you can access market data and so forth. All right, so Andrew, have a great weekend and... Thank you so much once again for joining us. You as well, Mary. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to IBKR Podcasts. As always, we have more episodes at ibkrpodcast.com. And if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education material, such as webinars at ibkrwebinars.com, financial and economic commentary at tradersinsight.news market-related courses at tradersacademy.online, and quant-related articles at ibkrquant.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. The material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and it's necessary to seek professional advice. The API examples discussed are purely for technical demonstration purposes and do not constitute trading advice. Also, it is important to remember that placing trades in a paper account is recommended before any live trading. 